Who said working out wasn't fun? With every coming week, this truck is getting into shape. Welcome to Envision Prototypes, I'm Nick. Today, I'm feeling crazy enough to wheel up this whole roof section from this window line to the other window line to the front windshield to about here as one piece. This back section, we're gonna form it up as a separate section, but for the most part, we're gonna use this blank here and create the roof panel for that area. It's gonna be fun. Because if you remember on this door, we have to basically do the exact same thing we did here, this roll, but all the way around the front and two side perimeters. So it's gonna be tricky because as we're wheeling this up, the middle section is gonna go down. So we're gonna to have to progressively blend into the middle of the roof and just take and bring that whole roof section up. So it's just due to the size of this panel, we're gonna change our wheeling pattern a bit from the last time we did the other roof. Go back, yeah. We're still maintaining the same wheeling zones, but just wheeling a little bit differently. You can see we hardly have any pressure on the wheel. As soon as we get some shape into the panel, then it'll kind of stay up there by itself. Right now you have to support the full weight of it with your arms. Since we can't wheel up the whole roof skin in one shot, because it is a lot of work and it takes a toll on the arms, kind of break it up with other panels and kind of take a break. It's still wheeling, but the panel's a lot smaller, a lot lighter. So what I've done here is I've started forming up the back half of the cab. And I've run it through the rubber wheel, broken the panel a little bit, we'll open it back up, and I'll start wheeling it out to develop the curvature for the back of the cab. Then we'll do the corners and then the area below the window. After this pass, we're gonna get it up on the roof there and try it, it should be the final time. I've been trying it every so often as we're wheeling it, as we're getting closer, constantly comparing it to the buck. And just wash this out and go up there and clamp it. Do a little pirouette there. Just spin the panel around and keep going. Saves me taking it out. Okay, just gonna touch up one little thing here. Just watching the reflections of the tubes in the panel. I need to bring up the area about two inches to the left of the upper anvil. A little bit of oil on the lower anvil, that's what's making that noise. Okay, we are, we are there, that's it. Yeah, you can see a little residue on that one. So we'll get that cleaned up next time we go to use it. Perfect. Just comparing it to the buck, to the curvature of the rods, right, the flat bar in this case. There's a rod here, flat bar there. And just comparing it now, the panel is a bit sprung right now. When we get this corner done up, then at that point, we'll take it and start blending the panels together. And then the other thing we have to do is we have to create this lower section through here. So uh, let's start on this piece first, and then we'll get in and finish this bottom piece. And it might even take and clamp that cab corner in place at this point. Okay, so hopefully that clamp holds those pieces in, in place. Because they're flat pad vice grips, they kind of slide around. So hopefully that stays put. What do you guys think? We've got this rear wall area below the window wheeled up. Got the form created, which extends out from the window line and back around to the other side. 
uh, this area below the green tape line will be cut off. I like to create a feature in one piece and not try blending features between panels. It's a little easier that way. And as you can see, this corner here, the feature on the door kind of dies off and into the, into the box side. So when the box goes on, this feature will die off, but you still have that gap. Now this is a bit tight down here, but you'll still have that gap between the cab and the box. And that should look pretty trick. The top is coming in quite nice. We're still wheeling the roof section on top there. Uh, there's a lot of work involved with that to have that one piece fit uh, in front of the cab there. And I still need to wheel up the driver's side corner, this piece here. So this is the uh, driver's side top cab corner. And we're gonna have to basically uh, do a wheeling zone in this area through here to get the shape that we need. This uh, rear window area has to remain relatively flat. So we're not gonna do too much wheeling into here. We'll just be blending down into this. Now I'm gonna move a little bit of uh, metal quickly here. So we're gonna go with a high crown anvil and uh, just uh, push this around a bit. I want to get my bearings straight here. Make sure that we're going to do the right thing. Might turn a little bit ugly for a few minutes. <laughs> but we're putting a lot of shape into this quickly, so instead of beating it out on the stump into a sandbag, it's going to do this. Tracking marks. What tracking marks? Look at that. You see what happens when you stretch this area up here. It's pulling material up, creating this concavity. Every time we've done this kind of wheeling, like on the doors or on the fenders, you've always experienced the same thing. So this is just a little more extreme case of what happened on the doors. Okay, let's clean this up now. Okay, and there we go. Nowhere near where we have to be, but you can see the shape developed quite nicely. So the top here, that has to roll down some more. I'm gonna go fit this up on the buck now and see what we need to do to get this to fit properly. Okay, so you see how this area is bulging up like this? just means that we haven't stretched this area enough. I'm not, going to I'm not going to shrink this yet because we're going to be stretching this lip as it rolls into the cab, into the window area. So we have to take and roll this up a little higher. The other thing I want to take and bring this out a little bit. So basically this piece goes all the way from the window to the window, from the shoulder line up into the roof. Kind of a tapered wheeling zone. More being on the corner, and then fading out as we get to the edge here. You have to look at the panel that you're creating to figure out your own wheeling zone. And use the tips I give you as a bit of a hint, but you know, this particular zone might not work for the panel you're creating. See, this area here has to be brought up a little bit. It's a little bit low, but we can't overwheel it because we don't want to bulge there. Now I just fit this, and the way it's sitting, this radius through here has to be a little bit higher than it is. So we're going to take and move that up. And now we're gonna go fit this again, and then we can start trimming away some material and make it more like the passenger side. There we go. See, just like that. So let, actually, I'm noticing something here. As soon as I suck that down, this area has actually has a dish. And it's only because we stretched all this up here, we didn't bring this up high enough. So that's one thing that has to be corrected before we go too much further. This line will get reconfigured as it comes around because we are sitting a little bit high with this 
with this here panel. Yeah, let's back up a little bit. Panel fitment can drive you bonkers at times. There's a lot of things happening at once. There we go. Now we can probably slide this whole thing down a little bit. Still the same problem. We are, this area here is too low. So I'm gonna go back to the wheel, wheel this up, bring it up. I wanna take and radius that corner just like we did over there. Settle that down a bit. I'm gonna get some half inch tape, rescribe this bottom line. So once we get everything all fitted, we'll take everything apart. Just start finding to fine tuning all the panels. If there's any little uh, deviations in the surface finish, we'll take care of them, but it's just a matter of just washing at that point. We're not doing any forming. And uh, this panel here, we're going to roll a flange on it to give it some strength. We'll also mark with the back window and have decided to take and taper the top of the window in just ever so slight instead of a rectangular window to follow the curvature or the angle of the um, roof panel. And I want all these clamps to go back in the exact same place, well, rough area that I took them out of. So this clamp came from here. I'm not gonna put it over there. I'll put it back over here. Everything's been all set up. Just putting the screws roughly in the spot where we need it. There's a flat bar in here, so I gotta be careful I don't hit that. See, it's up a little bit, but that'll all work in eventually. <laughs> Not today. Uh, right now, what I'm focused on is fitting all these rear pieces together and, and marking out the rear window. See, once all these panels are fit back here, then we can start fitting the roof to everything else. This is a fixed point. This will be a fixed point. The front windshield is fixed. So now we can work everything in together. Don't worry about that. We're still working on that. So I'm gonna play off this body feature here, come up two inches with this two inch tape and see if that is a good height for the bottom of the window. I'll fix that in a moment. I don't want the window to be too large. See, it's something that might look good in a drawing in terms of size, but in real life, it might look a bit different. So we're gonna see what it looks like on the vehicle itself. Okay. Okay, use some three-quarter tape. That's gonna be the bend lined. So 
See this area here? Kind of diving down. It's trapped underneath that flat bar. There we go. So that'll make a, a big difference right there. So we run our three quarter inch tape. We'll set the diagonals and that's gonna be it for the rear window just for now. Up straighter or more of an angle? This way or this way? I think parallel with the sides there. Let's put it right there. Hey, hey, it's been a long day guys. We'll radius the corners and all that stuff, of course. After I look at this for a bit, we'll run our half inch tape around the perimeter and uh, kind of mock up the window with tape. Good. How does that look, guys? We're on the final stretch of this uh, roof panel. Uh, we're going to have to touch up a little bit around the front here because of a few little wheeling marks. But okay, that to blend in quite nicely. That's going to roll over the door area. And about an inch and a half of this will be rolled over inside. Well, not the full inch and a half, but we'll cut away what we don't need and about three quarters of an inch will be rolled inside. And what we do on one side, we repeat on the other side. Switch. Once you trim the, trim the panel up a bit, we'll touch it up a little bit more. Right now we're concerned about getting the shape right. Out you go. Okay. All right, let's go lengthways across the front, touch this up, blend it in, and we can go try this. We're going to do a bit of a curve to follow the nose a bit. Just keep going and going and going out. You don't want to overdevelop the crown in the roof. That's it. Okay, so let's go try this up on the roof, see how it fits, and uh, maybe this might be the last time. Okay, how much material do you have on your side over the door? Uh, inch and a half, two inches. Okay, come, come my way a little bit. Okay, now we've got a center line that we line up with back here. Two inches exactly. Good eye. Okay, got the center line lining up with the rear panel and that's as far as you can reach, eh? Is that it? Yep. Good. We didn't wheel out to the very edge, so some of this will be trimmed off of this panel. And then this roof section will blend into the rear cab area. We're just checking the curvatures, making sure we don't have any weird things going on. Now there is a small depression right about here, about six inches in diameter. But once I take and roll this down, roll that down, that might actually come up. So we're gonna leave it. But everything else is fitting well. Do you have a squeeze clamp? Right here? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, we have to actually come ahead a bit. We've slid, slid back a little bit. I have nothing to roll over the edge. So we're gonna come back about, oh, you know what happened? This actually pulled the panel. So we're gonna slide it ahead about an inch and a inch or so. Yeah. Oh. How's the front? See, this lines up perfectly with our old mark now, so. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, good. Clamp, clamp over the door. Yeah. 
rest pressure to hold it there and that seems to blend really well. Yeah, that looks good. That's a lot better. That little depression that we had here, it's gone. You see, we wheeled it to the buck and because the roof was sitting in the wrong spot, too far back, it was creating tension within this area because this was sitting up too high. So I think it's at this point we're gonna put a series of screws across the back, join it together, take, mark this, cut it off, trim it, and roll this edge. We're getting really close. The front will roll afterwards. Getting ready to scribe and cut away the material that's not needed. We only need to roll over about five eighths of an inch. I know I said three quarters earlier, but it's only about five eighths of an inch up underneath. And well, as you can see, the roof has taken quite a nice shape. A couple of little ripples up there, but that's gonna be taken care of after. Everything's coming together, but once you trim that away, it'll come together a little bit better. Just by tapping that over the wire, and now I can now see where the wire is and cut off what I don't need. Coming in quite well. Just need to take and touch up this area through here. Okay, well that's getting really close. Got to fine tune this a little more, get another hammer with a bit sharper radius to get that into alignment. But as you can see, we're just about there with this roof. This is really exciting to <laughs> wheel up a whole roof section and get it installed from door to door to windshield. Uh, we have one weld across the back, that's not a big deal, you know, we can work that. When we open up the back window, we can reach in and work that out quite nicely. Um, as it turned out, I hit the rod dead on with that center screw, that's why it's up a little bit. Didn't feel it at the time, but looking from here, I hit the rod. So we have to back that out, push the metal down, and put, another, put the screw in, in a different location. But as you can see, that's really blending in with the A-post pillars, and it's really looking good. On the coupe, we took and made up two sections and made up a center and welded that center section in. Here, we got one piece and it, you know, it just saves a lot of work in welding and finishing because, well, that, you know, that's done. But wait, before you go. Boom, our 1944 custom pickup truck, the M40P. So we basically shaped up two of everything for the front, for the coupe and for the truck and two rear fenders, both sides. And past little while, I've been working on all the side pieces, the door skins, the roof skin, all that stuff. And she's coming together quite nicely. Now, things are just sitting on top of the buck. The buck is still up inside. You can see parts of it up in the windshield there. That's why the hood is sitting a bit high because the flanges haven't been turned in that area. Once we do, it'll drop down, but we're getting really close. Now it's gonna be a matter of fitting all the panels to each other correctly and just trimming, scribing, and welding everything together. Thought it might be a nice little surprise for you guys. Last little while you've been watching us wheel up that roof skin, develop all those panels for the back there. And well, this is what the back is gonna kind of look like. Still in the works. Still working on that tailgate. That green tape represents a cut line. So that rear window will open up a bit more. The green tape line indicates where the roll has to happen for the flange, for the recess. And there we have our gap between the cab and the box. Now that piece is turned a little bit this way because the flange on the, tail, on the bedside is pushing it inward. That's why we have that gap up here. As soon as it gets turned back, it's where it needs to be. And of course the front gap is way out of whack at the moment. Like I mentioned, the hood is sitting too high. That's going to drop down, close up that gap all the way along. What do you guys think? A little bit different than a original. Right now the hood is appearing a bit long because we have nothing in that opening. As soon as we fill that in with a custom grill, 
billet grill will fabricate that from scratch. That'll uh, help the appearance up front a little bit. See, it doesn't stick out too much. Same as a 40, almost. Just a bit different. Okay guys, I get back to work and keep plugging away on this project. We really appreciate you watching. See you next time. Take care.